Hey, what's up guys? It's Mario back again with another trade video. So uh, today I'm going to cover a trade that I did on Lee, uh, Chinese electronic vehicles uh, stock. Now I, on Friday, I actually did short sell uh, Lee on a first red day. It's an amazing trade. I do have a video if you want to uh, take a look at that. I did make that last week. But because, yes, uh, Friday was such a huge sell-off day and it was a broken down stock, I felt like there was an opportunity for a continuation of that sell-off. Just because uh, the whole uh, industry, the Chinese electronic vehicle industry, companies like uh, NIO, uh, Li, and XPAV, they've been overextended. So I felt like there was a little bit more room on the downside. Uh, so today I was looking for a low-hanging fruit short on Li. Um, so I am going to cover that trade today. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button if you learned something from this video and also subscribe to the channel. I do post videos every single uh, time I do trade. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Let me share my screen. All right, let me share my screen so we can get started. Okay, all right, let's get started on this. So why did I short Lee? Um, just to kind of give you a quick background explanation of what happened last Friday. Uh, so last Friday, um, actually, yeah, last Friday, Lee had a first red day. Again, overextended in the daily chart. I did short this. I made a huge gain. Um, and not only Lee, but also XPEV, another Chinese EV stock, as well as NEO. So there was huge moves to the downside. And again, I, I did feel because it was such extended uh, stock, there was more room to the downside. So my thought process today coming in was that first of all you know i'm looking at the on, on, on the uh intraday chart again first red day huge sell-off on lee um so i'm looking i'm looking for to short on any uh bounces uh to the the mid midpoint which is right here at 34. um yeah, i was even looking at 36. Uh, but again, I usually do like to trade only the first hour. So if I only, if it doesn't hit 36 within the first hour of the trading day, I'm not going to be waiting to the, the second half of the trading day to short this because by that time the trade is not going to work. Uh, so let me explain what happened. So again, the, the pre-market, there was a gap up um, and it kind of, it kind of went uh, red, um, you know, when, when a couple minutes before the open. But one thing that made the stock move so fast, such a huge move, is because it was actually upgraded uh, by an analyst. And I believe that analyst was, let me see, I feel it was City? Yeah. A City. City Group, you know, upgrades to Lee uh, and announces a 45.6 price target. So, of course, that is going to help uh, spike the stock. So my thought process was that even if there is an upgrade, um, I feel like that upgrade may not reflect, the, the price may not reflect the, that upgrade until like maybe a couple of days of consolidation. So I felt like that even though that might help the stock, that it might hit a uh, midpoint or 36 and kind of like pull back and stuff. And it kind of did do that. Um, so now I'm going to zoom in and kind of show my entries. It kind of went straight to midpoint. I got short was a great entry and it literally pulled back to VWAP. Now, um, I know a, a lot of traders like to cover half on the VWAP as soon as it pulls back to VWAP. And honestly, uh, that is kind of like the right thing to do. Um, I could have actually made some money instead of lost some money in this trade. Um, but, you know, I felt like uh, there was going to be a bigger move to the downside and I wanted to maximize this trade as much as possible. I didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, we could say, um, take some, close some shares. I actually wanted to maximize it. And I actually ended up adding in the raw spot. And, and this is not the review in the trade. I, I you know, I kind of felt like I, I found a better spot I could have added. So I got in at 34. My target was to kind of go below 32, maybe go red on the day. Um, but one of the areas where I messed up that I should have added instead of adding right here is that as soon as it broke down out of this resistance level, the support area right here at 33.19, 33.20s, when it broke out this level, I should have gotten short here on a, what some traders call like the first resistance level. Uh, gotten short here, should have added shorts, and, and by that time, I should have been able to get my, a good RR and kind of covering the lows here. Uh, but I kind of, I guess you could say, I either hesitated or I wanted to see more confirmation. So, 
I guess when it broke down below below VWAP, I felt all right. So broke down below VWAP, it might pull back to to VWAP and consolidate and eventually maybe continue the downtrend. So that's the reason why I did end up shorting here at 32, 60, 60 64. Um, looking for a pullback. Now, my idea was okay, if it breaks above this level 32, 33.20s, I'm gonna get I'm gonna stop out on the on the on this ad. So it did, I stopped out on this ad, you know, it didn't work out. So I wanted to see if, if what was gonna happen, it was it gonna top out in the midpoint, or if we're gonna continue to move uh you know to 36, and so I could add here, uh better my average, and then we get a pullback to V web and stuff like that. Uh, so that was my thought process. Now it, it didn't exactly happen. That didn't exactly happen. Um, it kind of consolidated and it started to look weak. And I felt that, all right, it's starting to look weak. There is some sort of trend here forming. And so I'm looking at here at a trend right here that I created that I felt that if it breaks below that trend, you know, we might get a continuation of that sell, you know, so kind of like a follow through momentum type of trade. So I am looking at this trend, paying attention to this. It's topping out again at midpoint. All right, so I'm gonna add back my shares uh, because it looks like it might pull back now. So I did add the shares that I, you know, stopped out here. I add them again. So you know, if I would, if it would have kind of sold, I would actually not lost anything. You know, because literally I added them pretty much in the same area that I stopped out. So I would have lost a couple cents, but not too bad. So that's the great thing about risk management. So I did short here, um, it kind of, you know, uh, absorbed that right away. So I was like, okay, I didn't like that. But the way I saw it is like, okay, you know, it's already uh, passed, uh, it's, already, it's already pretty much uh, zombie hours, uh, one hour after the market uh, has opened. So if price is not reverse, you know, cause usually during zombie hours, price tends to reverse. So there's like an uptrend during zombie hours, it reverses that, or there's a downtrend during zombie hours, it spikes up. So if this does not pull back below VWAP, I'm gonna stop out all of my shares at high day. So that was around 34.22. So it kind of consolidated, uh, you know, around here the 33.50s, and it literally started kind of, you know, trend again, and then boom, I got stopped out at high day. So that was that. I was pretty much done with that, um, you know, and I was pretty much done. Honestly, I was gonna finish for the day, but. Uh, I did notice that it started to break down again below uh, the, the midpoint. And I was like, okay, what's going on here, man? This, this, uh, Lee is playing games with me. Um, so, and not only that, but I also noticed Neo, which is the head of the snake, the main uh, ticker that, that kind of moves all the EV, all the Chinese EV stocks. And I noticed it was starting to downtrend and kind of move below the VWAP. So I, so I felt like, you know what? If Neo is pulling back, Lee is going to come come with it too. Lee was going to uh, start to move down too as well. So I did end up shorting again. I gave it another opportunity. Uh, so I noticed that it broke down again uh, below the uh, midpoint and my thought process was like, okay, it breaks down below midpoint, it, it pulls back another opportunity break as you can see, a first resistance type of short. If it hits that midpoint again, I'm going to get, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get short. So it kind of pulled back went below VWAP, bounce again, hit the midpoint, uh, and I was short. So my thought process here was, okay, so I hit it, and if it, it kind of continues a downtrend, um, again, I'm gonna start, you know, covering below, uh, you know, start covering at 3220, that was a major support area, and, and even below that. Um, and actually, I did add orders here at 34. I actually missed my entry by like, one penny and actually did hit 34 um but i did not uh, get filled here unfortunately uh interactive brokers did not fill me there was really not a lot of volume there i should have put it maybe at 30 uh 33.99 that would have been a better entry i mean I'm, i should have gotten filled by then but no big deal um you know at this point it uh you know it, i guess it didn't really matter um it did eventually hit uh, the midpoint again and i was in and I let it do its thing, and it started to kind of consolidate. It started to kind of pull back and consolidate, and it wasn't really doing much. And I, you know, and I, and I, and I, the reason, the, the reason why I decided to cut is because, you know, it did not do exactly what I was expecting. You know, it, it was starting to kind of hold, hold these levels at 3350s, and I was like, you know what, 
I don't like this. It's consolidating. Uh, it's already after um, after zombie hours, and the and it has not the, the trend has not reversed. So this does not look good. Uh, so I decided to stop out. I took a little, I cut my losses a little bit. So that was nice, and I'm glad I did stop out because it decided to kind of turn after that. So that was a nice uh, cut for me. So even though I lost on this trade. Um, I was able to kind of manage it in a way where my losses did not exceed uh, my my risk uh, adjust the type of risk that I that I managed for each trade. Uh, so I was kind of happy with that overall. Um, it could have been a lot worse if I would have stuck with this this short, and I would have gotten squeezed out. So I'm glad I didn't, and I decided to get out. So one of the things about trading, guys, that uh, I want to mention is that uh, trading is pretty much like chess. You know, that's the reason why I decided to put this background. Uh, now there's this new show on Netflix called uh, The Gambit's Queen. Um, it's a really, really uh, cool show uh, that talks about, you know, uh, you know, uh, Miss Harmon, Miss, Miss Harmon, a uh, very famous, uh, uh, well, in the movie, uh, young um, poker player, I mean, excuse me, not poker player, chess player uh, that, she's really really good at it and the thing about trading as well is that similar to chess you have to kind of start you almost have to see uh three or four moves you know ahead you know you got to start you got to think about two or three moves you know if the, the price does this then i gotta do this if it does that then i gotta do this so you have to have multiple scenarios and be prepared for each and one of those scenarios that is how you're able to not only minimize your losses, minimize your risk, but also maximize your wins. So when the, the trade actually does exactly what you, you're expecting, you are full size and you fully take advantage of that trade. And that's how you're able to maximize your gains and also minimize your losses. And as a trader, again, you're, you're never going to be perfect. Uh, you're never going to have 100% win days. But as a trader, the goal is to to understand what's happening during the chart, the momentum, the, the price action, and, and, and then the levels, support and resistance levels. And from there, figure out, you know, how you, what, what moves you're gonna make to increase the probability of success, but also to, to maximize your trades and minimize your losses. All right, guys, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Uh, look forward to hearing from you guys soon. And also, if you have any questions, uh, please, ask, please ask them in uh, YouTube uh, comments. I will answer to all of your questions. Thank you very much. Have a good one.